Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director. I have an incredible guest today, but before I talk to our guests, I want to talk about a little about what um, we're doing with our Art So Wonderful, primarily. And Art So Wonderful is a program that helps individuals with arts and music. And we've uh, been around since 2003. Showcase our, uh, we help individuals showcase the art and uh, music and uh, put potentials. And we, uh, we have all the murals, 60% of the murals in Burlington are Art So Wonderful. And in 2010, we created Art So Wonderful electric boxes. So all the boxes you see everywhere, is, including our partners in South Burlington, who, who are, um, was created by Art So Wonderful. It's called Art So Wonderful Boxes. Um, and then recently, this, um, we just had a big event for Juneteenth, sponsored by the City of Burlington and, and Racial Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Office. And uh, it was big success, and uh, you see that mural is on X Place, um, and it represents Juneteenth and um, the plight of um, people of color, black people, African Americans, mostly. Um, and and it's, it's 90, well, no, 60 people, I'm sorry, it's over, like over 60 people showed up for that. Down that alley, Th Thorson Way, as my friend Chafin told me, <laughs> um, it's going to be a, a, a credible mural all the way around that area where you see all the way back around the alley coming out on College Street. It's called, it's going to be called Art So Wonderful Art Alley. And we're going to put art all around there from the community. It's going to be interactive. And um, so we're looking for muralists and artists who want to um, come up with a design and put on that um, those walls. And um, I, everybody's welcome. And you don't have to be an artist. And everybody's included. So um, so you can contact me, Bruce Wilson, Art So Wonderful at gmail.com. And so now let's talk to our guest, Shapin <laughs> Spencer. How you doing, sir? Bruce. Wow, thank you for Pleasure coming on the here. show. Uh, uh, Straight talk for much, you. Um, wow, we've known each other for I don't know how long. Couple uh, decades now. Woo, long time. Yep. So I want to thank you first, uh, Chapin, for sponsoring all our Art So Wonderful programs. And you know, yeah. personally, you do that yourself. You know, and you donate money to us and all the things you've done, you know what I mean, to help us c continue to get better. You know? I'd never heard that uh, Art So Wonderful has over 50% of the murals in the city. 60. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you have contributed a lot of talent and creativity to this community. And, you know, what makes Burlington great? It's not the infrastructure, it's the people. Yeah. And so it's folks like Definitely. you uh, and your board and your volunteers yeah. that makes Burlington what it is. No doubt about it. And our board couldn't do it without none of you guys. I mean, like, yeah. how smart am I? I'm smart enough to know you guys. <laughs> you know, because team, team effort, team effort right? is, you know, it's everybody's job to help each other, right? Yeah. For real. And, um, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I'm also the Vermont Human Rights Commissioner. Yeah. State Commission and a lot of boards for anti-racism and da da da. So and your I, volunteer roots run deep. Yeah, well, you know, well, I, you know, it's the best I am. That's the best I can do is work with the people and help yeah. them with their goals, dreams, and aspirations. But um, so let's talk about how all this started. And it's all, let me tell you, something. so this is how it all started, Chapin. It's how it all started. When I used to whoop your butt down at Smalley Park and you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun way back there. You played basketball at Smalley Park. You remember that? Those I, days? Ba barely, barely. Barely. I yes. know. You had a good shot. Uh, what was, what's your, uh, what's your, uh, the other city council? I can't think of the legislators now. Oh, God. Well, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a, we had a great time. And so that's, that's, that, you, I made you, no. <laughs> you guys, I think you guys used to beat us all the time. Because it was like a two on two, you know. But um, that was a lot of fun back then. And so, Shaven, so did, um, were you, how, did you, were you born and raised in Vermont? I came here when I was 24 years old, mm -hmm. finishing up uh, college, and uh, I was looking for a place to set down roots, and uh, I was lucky enough to be hired by uh, Erhard Manka, uh, the Community Housing Federation, what was soon folded into Burlington Community Land Trust. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working on affordable housing, and uh, Erhard got me involved uh, volunteering on the uh, Burlington Skate Park Task Force. Oh, when, wow. Uh, that's nice. Burlington, unfortunately, didn't have uh, a skate park for our kids, right. and uh, it was great to help make that That was that the first happen. one? That was the first skate park? Yeah, down on the waterfront, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. the asphalt and some of the yeah. wooden features. It yeah. wasn't the modern skate park no. we have today. Yeah, down in the Adolph's Park, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we've done so many events in that, at, in, in that park that you helped, mm -hmm. your task force helped do. Um, I think one of the, it was incredible park, you know, I think, the, I think you've, um, and, Anybody who was who skateboard loved that park, and they came down and did whatever they do, and um, and and so I think one of the situation was that um, 
you know, everything went well, but you know, the, the, the structure, like the sound boards, everybody, they'll come put graffiti over it, mm -hmm. and so you couldn't, you know, you, right. you, those little holes, it's not a sound, it don't, it don't, it's meaningless if you can't, if you, if you paint over it, right? So that was the thing, I don't think I could think of was wrong. I'm sure skateboarders would say that, um, some other things, but I yeah. think was, the good thing about it was down there, Great Park was there for years. Right. We've done, uh, we, we had, um, like, shows like rock shows and uh -huh. hip hop shows and the Burden was our sponsor. We had big old events down there at awesome. the Skate Ball Park and uh, and so uh, fortunately um like um Andy Williams who's his A dog was um skating there he was one of his young kids now we got a park named after him. That's Skateboard right. Park, and he was an incredible um DJ and great Burton. legacy and one of the, the folks I wanna give a shout out to is Packy McGurn. Oh yeah. Who was uh, a young kid, uh, eight, nine years old, wrote a first letter to the city council mm -hmm. saying Burlington needed a skate park. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say, sometimes things don't move as quickly as we'd like. Oh, God, man. And uh, he ended up being in Champlain College by the time uh, we had the skate park up mm -hmm. and running. So well, that's good. thanks for his patience and yeah. ongoing yeah, advocacy. Yeah, yeah, I know. That was cool. I, I, might, I might remember that, too, because I might, I might have been in that meeting, meeting in the city council, because they sure. probably asked me, because I'm a you know, youth um, advocate, advocate. As, as well. You know, yes, you are. You know, and, um, Yes, and I, you know, I love our youth, you know what I mean? I, I uh, help youth get on um, the boards for the city, uh, city boards, on youth yep. on boards for the city and all around the state now. That's and, right. Um, and you passed a, helped pass a, a resolution in the city that Councillor Pine at the time yeah, yeah. Uh, brought forward to get youth on boards. And one of the things we've done at Public Works mm. to take the spirit of your resolution is that we engage with the Burlington City and Lake program at the high school. Nice. So instead of just getting one uh, youth to come to the Public Works Commission, we actually bring the Public Works Commissioners and staff mm -hmm. to the City and Lake program at the Burlington High School no, no. and give feedback from dozens of high school students on so important. Great Streets Main Street, uh, on the Battery Street Corridor study, and actually we just had a couple City and Lake students today oh, wow. at the press conference for GMT bringing five electric buses into the region. Oh yeah, I know about that. And hearing their message about the climate crisis and how uh, we need to do more to protect their generation. No doubt about it, and I like need to have ideas into how to do it as well as be on um, have um, something to put on the agenda, have agenda item. Because mm -hmm. that's what, that was one of the things yeah. we went over with the uh, RU from boards was need us, you know, um, and then since that time we, we amended, we went back to the city council and amended it. So now they can vote, have it broke counts, mm -hmm. you know, because it wasn't counting it then. It was like, yeah, you know. And, and another part of it too was like, if you was in, like on the finance committee for the city of Burlington, mm -hmm. you know, you might like finance, that's probably why you were on it. But you know, when it come down to um, those, those, I can't, this, where's my where's my money? You know what I mean? All that you know, the finance, you know, quarters, the data, and right. money. Yeah, I, you know, it's the same as like boring for those youth. And so, um, is there I, an issue you haven't worked on yet in well, your life, Bruce? Well, I don't see. It seems like it. I'm seeing like every time when we talk about something, it seems like I have something to have something to do with it. You know, but those youth, the problem with one of those things about the youth too is that we need to we need to start getting them on have putting their own agenda item on on the, on the agenda, and also <clears throat> to make. Um, to talk about, like, if you, um, the discretionary funds or, or whatever, um, how can we support other youth in the projects that they're doing, you know, with the finance, like through the finance committee, or the pro, pro, you know, the commission, all of these commissions that they sit on, they need to be able to make sure that their youth and their peers are included in whatever we're trying to do for, the, for whatever, whatever, whatever they say. That's right. Yes. <clears throat> That's right, and so much of the work, uh, traditionally, at Public Works has, has been a hard, uh, avenue to figure out how to engage the youth in a discussion about infrastructure, but there is such a role in yeah. terms of how do, how should our built environment work for kids, families, yeah. elders, people of all abilities, and we've gotten such great feedback from the young kids with insights about you know having space to hang out with their kids, uh, with their friends, where they don't have to pay to have a meal. Oh man. You know, in places to be able to go skateboard so that if mm -hmm. we're not wanting uh, our young kids to skateboard on streets, mm -hmm. let's give them a, a world-class skate park on the waterfront. No doubt about it. Which we've done. And, we've done that. You know, so together nice. we need to build a community that really supports all of us, young and old alike. No doubt about it. No doubt. Now and, that you and I are on the far end of the oh, yeah, you know, continuum. We, I know. We're still riding our bikes, though. You rode your bike today. I rode mine. Yeah. Hey, that's good. It helps keeps us, uh, keeps keep, us young. Uh, yes, it does. And so... You know, I, you know, I don't, you know, 
I don't know if you noticed, but I opened up five. You've seen this across the state. You know, chill out in the living rooms and right. I, um, Loft 89 and. You had a place at the University Mall for a yeah, while? University Mall, one in the Burlington Mall, yeah. one in the Diamond One Mall in Rutland. We opened up one in, in, in Winooski, underground, and in, uh, in Fairhaven, Loft 89. Okay. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And then um, two art galleries, you know, University Mall and Burlington Mall. And all this was like uh, free for youth to have, uh, to come, and youth and families to come where they can showcase their talents and also um, like, um, they can, um, someplace they can hang out, especially art for the, for the youth centers. We had a youth advisory board that made the decisions on our programs, projects, and events. So that was their place, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. And so um, that's what we need. We need more of that, you know, give them alternatives to um, risky behaviors, whereas they can have a place to be. If they hang out at our youth center or anywhere in our places or at a board meeting with you, um, look, they're not, in the, they're not in the woods, they're not in the basement, they're not, you know, in some high-risk environment, drinking or drugging, they're not, they're there with you for that two hours. Listen, how safe is that, you know? So, Thank you, sir, yeah. once again, for doing all, you know. The doing partnership work. with Burlington City and Lake at the high school is really amazing. Yeah. We're going to continue that work, and so glad that you brought forward the resolution to spur this effort on our on our part. Yeah, well, I, it was my, and you for advice about it, you know, I think that, I think that youth should be on everybody's board. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, if you want to know about the, the future, you need to talk to youth, and like, they do so many things that we don't really know about all the different uh, sites they're on, all the different <laughs> work they're doing, what they're working on. Like, huh, what? I don't know. Jeez, <laughs> Louise. I'm just going to let you do that. You know what I mean? I'll you know, second it. You know what I mean? So, uh, That's good. We got to listen more to the young people. No, no doubt, doubt about it all the time. And I've been I've been trying to spearhead that since at least 1999. But uh, um, so, but, um, so let's talk about, um, so you was on Burlington City Council. Mm -hmm. so, so what was your tour there? I did two, tour, two tours of duty, uh, <laughs> ah. 1998 to 2002. Uh, I served with a number of wonderful uh, folks on the council. I remember Richard Kemp yes. uh, being one of the strongest advocates for affordable housing back then. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to uh, demonstrate that we can uh, build uh, and preserve yep. Uh, housing so that we can provide uh, a place for all of us to live and enjoy Burlington. It breaks my heart that I hear from folks that want to live in the city and want to afford themselves of all the benefits of living in Burlington, but uh, can't afford uh, to do so. So uh, it was really great to serve with Richard and a number of others, but at the end of the day, I yeah. felt like uh, it was hard to be one of 14 members on a council right. and have an impact where I felt like uh, running a nonprofit local motion and then mm. uh, running public works. Uh, we could carry out the, uh, the agenda uh, a little easier to be one person in charge right. working with a whole bunch of organizations and, and volunteers to move agendas than just to wait as a counselor for one item to come to vote. Right. So let me ask you, I think uh, Richard Kim was in the first black um, city council? I think it was the, I want to say first or second. Yeah, I can't, hmm. I can't remember. Yeah, I, yeah, because I can't remember the first or second. Okay. It wasn't him. But that's all right. So, yeah. you know, it was, a, it was a trailblazer, you know, now they get the Richard Kemp Center out to honor him. Yeah. And um, a lot of stuff go on there. So many. So his daughter, Christine um, Kemp, or oh, huge, Huge is the director. That's and right. She has a lot of programs for youth and families, and well, they had a big thing on um, for Juneteenth and as well as Father's Day. They always have something going on there. So I would tell people to go down to Richard, look up Rich, um, Richard Kemp Center, and you know, take your kid or family down there and see what they have going on down there. So wow, so you so you talking about me having tours of different things, me di having different things. <laughs> it was so cool to see you after, you know at the you know Bro you know Rose and City uh, Council meetings when I come in and present or whatever the hell I'm there for, and um, Richard and the rest of the, the team, you know you guys are. But I think back the time you served was really creative, you know, because we was just trying to pull Burlington together. You know, you still had the deficits and you still had to, you know, trying to get our, um, our you know tax rate our tax um, scores up, keep them up, and um, a lot going on, you know, in the city at the time, you know, um, you know, a lot of building, a lot of infrastructure, you know, and um, you as a part of making, help make those decisions. And so that led you to DPW, That's Department right. of Public Works. Yep. Department of Public Works, bro. Wow, what a big deal. So you was appointed in 2013 by the yeah, mayor. Yeah, so it's been so 11 years now, and ah. uh, 
uh, tell you it's some of the most meaningful work I've wow. uh, ever done. Uh, I joke uh, with friends and family. Some people like to play video games like SimCity. I get to play mm. uh, SimCity every day, oh, which man. for yeah. real life, for uh, real. <laughs> creating the infrastructure and the uh, the landscape on which we yeah. all live our lives. Yeah. Well, before we go there, let's talk about locomotion because I got to. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna tell this story. I tell this story to uh, so many people through the years. So I remember. I had an office down there, down was that the lake, lake what's the name of that? The uh, wing building wing down building there. building down there on yep. the waterfront. Um, and and so for, uh, you know, our youth office. Right. And um, so I walk past down the hallway. It's gigantic. I don't know how many places, you know, we had like nothing for three people in our office. And, you had, uh -huh. and I walked down there and looked at the end, and then here you are, sitting in a desk by yourself in this gigantic empty ass room. And I'm like, Chapin, what's going on, bro? I mean, I, you got all this space. He said, Bruce, Bruce, let me tell you, this is locomotion, because we we'll have bike paths, we we'll have a, you know, uh, people are gonna be able to take the, uh, the boat across, and it's gonna be, you can ride your bike on the street, we're gonna have lanes and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, you know, and thank you, sir. You did everything you said you was gonna do. You know, that was a, that was a you know, I think oh, that's- I You're think, much too kind. Well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, people know that story. I mean, a lot of people knew that story, but not like I knew it, you know, because I knew you for a city council and all that, you know. Right. But um, services rendered was down the hall. That's right. And uh, yes, uh, local motion originally yeah. Burlington Bikeways uh, yeah. had a large room with a very few <laughs> number of folks in it, but uh, with a lot of. Yeah. Good work, a yeah. lot of donations and yeah. volunteer effort. Yeah. It grew to uh, oh. a large organization that oh. filled up uh, a lot more of the building I than know. we thought in the oh, beginning. Oh man! And plus, you know, man, it's you know what? Because we had um, we had a um, a, a program that would um, um, help individuals with you know riding by healthy outlets, you know things yeah. like that, and ride bikes, yep. and snowboarding, and skiing, and things like that. And boy, locomotion would you guys would like uh, um, let us. Sponsors for bikes for, and we take them down. Any, well, what's what we going to go? Causeway, we going this way, you know. And so just ride those bikes. And so, yeah. well, I, and I have been down there to, to use those bikes. I got my own now, but I, <laughs> but I had one then too. But I still use there with the kids. But I'm um, just wondering if they still rent those bikes out down there. Yeah, the local motion still going strong. It's great to see uh, new leadership uh, down yeah. there and. Uh, you know, they're far more than just renting bikes. They're working uh, no uh, about across it. the state on yes. pedestrian and bicycle issues. Yeah. And they're doing great work and wow. excited to see them continue to fly. Wow. wow. I know, man. And so every time I hear, hear somebody say locomotion, I'm like, I think of the story, man. I'm like, <laughs> and I, you know, I have to tell that story to people all the time. I tell, you know, yeah. and I say just the way I said it then, and maybe probably better, but wow, what a. What a thing, man! What a what a big deal, you know? What I mean, like, you know, I'm loving it because I ride my bike and I need that lane. You know, well, you know. First of all, I need that lane. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, walking and biking are signs of a healthy community. When we're walking on the street, we run into neighbors, we see colleagues, mm -hmm. and conversations start and ideas flow. That's the, the, the why we live in cities is to is to enjoy the 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 vibrancy and the energy and ideas and having a place that supports uh, people walking, biking, scootering, kids getting to school under their own power. Uh, you know, it, it, it creates a virtuous cycle that uh, builds a healthy community. Yeah, well, I, I think that um, it's a lot more with the public, because now this is, an, um, I think it's a, it's a good, good transition that you went to after the locomotion to the Department of Public Works. I think it was a good transition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, but you know, the Department of Public Works, is, <laughs> you're the, you're, you probably got the most budget in the damn st in, in the city, <laughs> do you? It's, uh, uh, is it Parks and Rec and then you guys, or, or, who, or you were in the, um, who's got the, well, who got the more employees? How yeah. about that? Let's put it, I know when you say budget, we know. Oh God, that's a dirty word sometimes. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but let's say um, who have more employees? Right. I mean, you guys got like we are a large more. department. Uh, we have about 125 full-time employees and uh, a couple dozen seasonal employees. Uh, look, uh, public works really provides uh, the foundation of life in cities. Uh, there's not much we can do in a day that doesn't involve water, wastewater, transportation, uh, engineering to fix the problems of today, whether it's parking garages or uh, stormwater challenges uh, in the city. 
And it is incredibly meaningful work to be able to provide the basic needs for a growing community. We're adding housing, we're seeing more people move in. And, you know, yes, there's conversations about the challenges that Burlington faces. Uh, we do need to address public safety challenges. We need to address houselessness issues. But at the end of the day, there is such a heart in this town and uh, it is incredibly meaningful to do the work that we do day in and day out. And what I like to say is the days that people don't think about us are the days we succeed. Mm, right. When they turn on the water, have a shower, brush their teeth, uh, flush the toilet, get to work, don't have an issue, pick up their kid at daycare, get home. They've used our services at every step of the way no doubt about it. without having to think about yeah, it. So let's talk about some of the projects you got going on because, it's, you know, thank God you're doing all those projects because now we might not have to do those projects in <laughs> I don't know how many years, but you can tell me. But uh, so what, are we, what, are, what projects is DPW working on right now? Because it's, 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 it's um, incredible what you guys are doing. And, it's, and, it's, and I thank you for doing it because you know, I might say, some people might think that is, you know, you know God is a headache. And it could be because it's kind of, it's kind of like going through a maze sometimes. Not necessarily a maze, but it's going, you know, detour <laughs> here to there to there. You know, but but, uh, but it's all... We're creating a few mazes in town, aren't we? <laughs> I'm not trying to use that. I didn't want to use that word. <laughs> well, since you use this, go ahead. But, but so so what are, what's the projects that you're working on now? Right. Uh, I want to thank people for being patient with us. Uh, let's just say uh, it has been a long time in coming. Burlington yeah. is an old city. Oh. Uh, our infrastructure is the foundation of a healthy home and you need a strong foundation it's been far too long that we have comprehensively upgraded our infrastructure a quarter of our water mains are over 100 years oh, old man. bruce mm -hmm. uh, and that leads to uh you know emergencies where we have water main breaks uh it means that uh, there's tuberculation on the inside of water mains that limits its throughput over time uh, we need to be rebuilding our roads for the modern day. Yes. And there's a whole host of capital projects that our team is digging deep to put in the ground. Uh, one of them clearly is Great Street's Main Street, where we are uh, working to abandon a ravine sewer mm. that was built 150 years ago uh, that diagonally cross cuts through downtown and has really prevented a lot of um, redevelopment of downtown. So well, let me ask you a question right there. So what is a um, ravine sewage? I mean, like it's, it's like, <laughs> when I think of a ravine, I think of something open, a water flowing that's open, you know, not, not something in a pipe. Well, let's just say <laughs> that, you know, Burlington evolved. Uh, as a young city, uh, there was a ravine that separated the waterfront from the hill section. Really? And uh, back in the mid-1800s, uh, they put a rail line through it. But it was hard to maintain a rail line uh, in a deep ravine that kept washing out. Mm. And so uh, after the railroad was rerouted, uh, they built a five to six foot uh, brick and stone sewer that was then covered up with soil and garbage oh, uh, wow. to flatten out a large part of downtown. Got it. And that ravine has operated fairly well uh, with very little maintenance mm. over uh, the century. And it got to the point where it was limiting redevelopment in downtown. And I'm pleased to be working uh, with our team mm -hmm. and Champlain Housing Trust right now to uh, work to abandon a section of this ravine sewer by creating a bypass uh, down Main Street, down Lower Church, plugging it into the sewer main on Maple Street. That's going to allow CHT to build the post apartments in the old VFW mm -hmm. uh, right on South Winooski. Right. that is going to provide dozens of affordable housing units, uh, space for the Community Justice Center, and a project that really couldn't happen without this uh, sewer realignment. Right. So sometimes nice. the reason projects aren't done, it may not be what you see on the surface, but mm -hmm. maybe what lies 30 feet below, right. which is the case for the ravine sewer. So let me talk about the OVHW place, BFW place. Um, <clears throat> So, so uh, I guess you say community justice, not city, city. That's the city. Yeah. Um, and so, the city project, city pro property, is or, or are you working? Are the city putting those units in, or you know, CHT probably in the city. 
Right. Nothing happens without partnership in this town, and uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without CHT. CHT is going to purchase the property. It is not city-owned property, uh, but we are working to uh, create a bypass on the ravine sewer that's going to allow their building to be on solid footing mm -hmm. and to be built in a way, mixed-use building with offices and housing and services. Uh, it's going up, huh? It's right going to be on the street. There's going to be trees installed in the green belt mm -hmm. uh, in silva cells that will allow the trees to grow big. Mm -hmm. It's really this public-private partnership uh, that allows uh, Burlington to be the great city that it nice, is. Nice, nice. You know, I don't know if you know this, but I'm the, one of the founders of Community Justice Center in 98. There you go. <laughs> and so Rachel Jolly, it's going to be nice yes. to have that office down in there. And uh, it, the organization is going great, and I understand with the uh, override of the governor's veto that... Uh, that mm -hmm. uh, that these types of uh, community justice centers are now going to be expanding into more communities across Vermont. Yeah. So, yeah, the thing you know, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the um, CJC community justice centers for a second. Uh, is that and that is that um, uh, we we always wanted um, community justice centers when we when we started because Burlington was the first one to start in '98, and we always wanted community justice centers to be its own nonprofit. The problem was that, <clears throat> you know, Vermont has probably got the most nonprofits in the whole country, I think. And I think it is. I think I'm, I'm not what I think. I think that's what it is. But um, and so it was hard to really um, get funding for a community justice center. So they, unless they put it on some type of entity like a city or right. the police department. And so we didn't really like that. You mm -hmm. know, the people were planning because that's not how community justice is supposed to be formed. It's supposed to be formed with the individuals, the community, and um, you know, it's like it was formed in um, Australia with the elders and the community, and it's in the commune around the circle to make right. decide what the you know, issues are, but they put it on the police department, the community justice, center, and, and I know they got S's is under is in the police department. I think um, this CJC in Bronx is underneath um, the city. Probably. It's now under the Community and Economic Development uh, Office. Oh, okay. And, you know, there are ways of making things happen, and sometimes right. our first preferred way doesn't work out. Yeah. And I think that applies actually to a number of our capital projects at mm -hmm. Public Works. Right. You know, the Champlain Parkway uh, is, was originally designed as a four-lane, limited-access highway that was going to blast through the city. It is now being built, finally, as a 25-mile-an-hour, two-lane city street with a lot of storm water. What street is that? Uh, the Champlain Parkway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a number of other capital projects mm -hmm. going on. I will say, since we're about moving towards wrapping up, is that people can go online to Public Works. You're seeing our website down below here. Mm -hmm. We have a construction portal that lists all the projects underway. Mm -hmm. So if people want to know what's happening in their neighborhood or how they can get more information, mm -hmm. all the information's on the website below. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that, you know, voters have proven again and again uh, that they're willing to invest in capital mm -hmm. renewal of our aging infrastructure. And I just want to say thank you because our team responds way too often to the reactive middle of the night breaks of our infrastructure, whether it's at our wastewater plants or our water system or our roadways that erupt if we don't maintain them. And it's your investment that helps us do more proactive work and less reactive work on uh, the infrastructure that really supports us all. All right, good. So before we wrap up, I just want to talk about <clears throat> Green Mountain Transit because we know you're the board of director. Sure. And uh, for a long time now, it's good you served in that position. Twenty-one yeah. years, maybe. Oh wow, that's, that's good. And it's good that you're on that. You know, it's good that you're on Green Mountain Transit. And I work with um, you know, Clayton Clark and all the rest of them. You know, yeah. John and Jamie and Romeo and all. Of them. And so you know the whole crew. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm on the <laughs> on the committee for the Justice, yes. Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion for Green. You Mountain are Transit. on the Jedi Committee, which yeah. is great. Yeah. But so. Um, and so you're getting those five buses now. Now, I, you know, I talked to some drivers about those buses, and they have, you know, like they think they think 40 feet long, right? And they're top heavy, right? They said the batteries on top of the bus, so it's kind of some of the issues that they think that I don't know, I don't know, you know, what the issue would be, you know, since it, you know if you put batteries on top, you got to balance it out to the the weight and flow. Right. But um, so the thing is, like um, the battery chargers and things like that. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, how, well, how are we going to charge those buses? I know Clayton was saying that it's, it's, it's a big deal, you know what I mean? We've got to change some structure at the uh, station right. down, down there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Any new idea has challenges with implementation, right? <laughs> you got to figure out how to make it happen. Right. I'm really pleased that Green Mountain Transit's leading the way with implementation of electric buses. Is it easy? No. Is it the right thing to do? Yes. 
Uh, we're working through some charging challenges, but the great news is Burlington's got a 100% renewable energy mix. Mm. So if there were any place in the country where charging an electric bus mm. to provide environmentally friendly transportation, mm. it's in Burlington. Right. So uh, Green Mountain Transit is an amazing entity. Over time, they launched the Link Express commuter buses that were a big success. Uh, we've just brought in smart uh, payment systems with uh, phones as apps as payment. Mm -hmm. We need to make uh, the right environmentally friendly transportation easy. Mm -hmm. We do have to struggle with a number of funding challenges for GMT. The base funding model for GMT doesn't support the current level of service. So we're going to have to work together, Bruce, to yeah, figure out no about how to better fund transit yeah. in Vermont. I know, I know it's just tough, you know, it's just tough, you know. I was thinking that we should put some charging stations at all the, like on DT downtown station, downtown center, down in um, S's. Stop, main yep. stop in Winooski. And that might help out some if we put some charging stations. They have buses always charging somewhere sitting around. You're going to need to look at a distributed transit I, I, uh, charging network. I, I know that's going to be, it's very expensive. You know, for maybe, private you know, vehicles for yeah. transit. Yeah. We're going to make that happen. And, you know, I really appreciate everything you've done oh, to elevate community efforts, uh, Bruce, that, you know, I wouldn't be able to do my job without youth being involved without art being an element, without hearing from voices that aren't often heard. And you've really helped make that happen. And I'm just saying too, Shaper, I mean, I'm not trying to like, you know, we're not trying to blow each other's horn, but you have, I've learned a lot from you too, like, you know, locomotion and city council work you do, DPW, I learned a lot. And it's in, in. Are we gonna keep, keep going? Keep getting smarter, bro. All That's right. it. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going if you keep going. <laughs> Of course, man. I can't, you know, I can't, I can't stop, man, because, you know, I love to see outcome measurements. I mean, that's good. I mean, and I love to see the city getting better. That's, that's yeah. probably the best I am is help things get better. Well, let's keep at it and uh, need folks, if you're watching, to get involved and uh, pitch in. We need yeah. everybody's help. Yeah. All right. So thank you for uh, coming on a um, Straight Talk Vermont show, Taven. Yeah. And um, this was I'll fun. see you again. I'll come back anytime. Yes, thank you. Bye.